this feels heavy. I feel like it hasn't run yet. Oh, wow. Well, welcome back, everybody and or anybody. Christian with Make Time for Fishing here. I am back out doing some sheep's head fishing in the same area as the last couple of videos. When they're biting like this, it's hard to convince myself to do anything else, and I feel like I need to take full advantage while these 20 plus inch fish are in such thick numbers. Hopefully I can find some more today, uh, and hopefully they're around like they have been. We've had a lot of rain the last few days. This is the first afternoon that's not rainy for about four or five days, so fingers crossed we can get on them. Just gonna try to get on a good number today. I am also doing a little bit of a reel review. Cast King sent me the Speed Demon Elite spinning reel. It looks awesome, it's supposed to be very well rated, and they're not paying me for this video, but they did send me this reel for my full and honest opinion on it, so I'm gonna get to it. Stay tuned, hope y'all enjoy the video. If you do and you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I post videos like this twice a week. I am going to be keeping some fish today. I haven't kept fish in a while because I had so much for my Alaska trip. If you haven't checked those videos out, you really should, they were a lot of fun. I'm going to be doing a sheep's head poke bowl, which I've shared on my Instagram before, but I don't think I've ever made a video on it. So stay tuned and I'll show you that at the end. But anyway, let's get after it. Let's go get some fish uh, and hopefully we get some dinner out of it. Enjoy the video. All right, so before we start fishing, I'm gonna show some stats on this reel on the screen here. Uh, I don't know them all off the top of my head, but one thing I do know is it has an insanely fast retrieve rate, 7.4 to one, which if you're familiar with retrieve rates on reels, that means I believe it takes in either 41 or 42 inches per retrieve, which on a 3000 size reel is insanely fast, which I'm excited about because I think that could help me break off fewer fish by pulling them out of the pilings quicker. Now I have this reel spooled up with 15 pound braid should be plenty that's what i'm used to using on these docks i also have it paired up with my six foot medium heavy ugly stick gx2 which is my go-to sheep's head fishing rod right now it's just very strong good backbone allows me to land a lot of fish and the jig i'm using was made by a subscriber named rex who sent these to me months and months ago and it's been a while since i've used them but when i have used them i've done very well on them and uh, i know rex still comments on my videos, so thank you again, Rex, for sending them to me. Hopefully I can get some fish on them like I have in the past. I'm in less than two feet of water right now and getting bit by sheep's head. Come on. There we go. Knew there was one there. Not real big, but not bad for the first one. It's probably just about a keeper. And that little swinging jig from my subscriber, Rex. <laughs> that one's definitely a pin. Oh no, it's a little sheep. Tiny, tiny little guy, but it's still sheep. Better than a pinfish. Another little one. Okay, it's about 45 minutes to an hour before low tide right now. I'm switching to a Freeline rig, which if you're new to the channel, is my favorite way to catch these fish if I can. Catch most fish, really. It's just the weight of the uh, bait and the hook no additional weight added, and you just let it sink down to the bottom and keep an eye on that line. If you keep a uh, moderate amount of slack in the line, it's usually pretty easy to tell when a fish grabs it. Like there, one already had it. This wind is making this a little more difficult than I'm used to. The reel feels nice though, but I would love to test it on some big sheep's head like I've been catching here in the last few trips. It's a decent fish. Nothing crazy, but it's a start. Probably a good, uh, 14 and a half, 15. Pretty guy, he'd be a keeper, but gonna hold out for a little bit. See if I can get a fish or two around 16 to 18. That's usually my preferred size to keep, just to get a lot of meat for him. All right. 
see where this ends up. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, is this a drum? No, I think it's a sheep. No, it's a drum. Decent little black drum. Surprise catch. Thought he was fighting a little strange for a uh, sheep's head. Come on. Pretty nice little black drum here. Probably uh, 18, maybe 19 inches. For me, that's a good one. <laughs> it's a cool little bycatch. I modified my split shot rig a little bit so that the weight is right on top of the bait. What I think that'll do and has done for me in the past is it allows me to feel what's going on with the bait a little bit better than when I distance the split shot. Oh my god. <laughs> that scared the bejesus out of me. What are you doing, man? Besides trying to scare me, apparently. And the fish. sheep. The reel's handling it like a champ, too. Oh, no, the hook pulled. Shoot. Must have not had the fish hooked very well. Dang it. Oh, no. Nice, um, I don't know, 14 incher, something along those lines. All right, went back to a 3 8 ounce sheep sticker jig. I need to get more of the pro jigs, I think. But 3 8 should be a good size for uh, the depth and current right now. Current is just flipping over, just beginning to flow in a bit. Wind's picking up again, huh? That was quick. Oh, man. Found you. Little guy, very cool coloring though. He's got some green around his nose. bigger, but still not big. Well, let me see. He might be worth keeping. Let's get a length on him. Right there. Yeah, he's just a little over 14. I'll wait till I get a 15 or 16. I'm pretty confident I can find someone about that size. I'm still trying to uh, find those keepers for the table. Taking some drag, that's a good one. Come on. Stay over here. <laughs> here we go. This is the bite. Oh yeah. That's probably a nice big keeper right there. He's under 20, I'm keeping him. 
Nice fish. Let's get a look at this big sheep. Yeah, I'm thinking that's probably a good keeper, about uh, 18, maybe close to 19, but definitely not 20. So he'll be going in the cooler is my first one. I'm uh, gonna measure him real quick just to see. Yeah, he's about uh, 18, 18 and a half. Great fight, that reel handled him well. Uh, I probably could have tightened the drag up a little bit more, almost got into some hairy situations there, but uh, slow day, but hopefully I can get some good fish on the rising tide here before I have to get out. But uh, let's get him in the cooler and uh, keep going. Stay tuned. Well, there's one there. I can tell because of the signature sheep's head chew. Not bad. Not as big as the last one, but uh, you know what? He's a keeper, but the last one was big enough. I'm gonna let this guy go. I've got enough fish, but I do still wanna catch some more and some big ones, so I'm gonna keep fishing. Little one. Alright, just got robbed over here. This feels heavy. I feel like it hasn't run yet. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's get him through here. Oh my gosh. Thank God I tightened that drag. That was unexpected. Wow. Uh, land him quickly before he has a chance to really run on me. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, he might be close to 20. That's a pretty big sheep's head. I think he's bigger than my last one by a hair. <laughs> oh, wow. Rising tide sheep's head to the jig. Yeah, the jig fell out in the net, so thankfully I didn't lose this guy. Let's get a measurement just to see. I'm thinking he's about 19. Ooh, actually, this is the first 20 inch of the day. 20 and a half, barely over, but uh, that's a big fish. Caught in a very shallow piling. Maybe I won't move on from this dock just yet. Ooh, man, this reel completely put the stop <laughs> to that 20 and a half inch sheep's head in some very tight quarters. That's not the situation you want to hook a big fish, but this reel, really, I'm, I'm impressed with that. That was amazing. Little sheep. You got some big guys down there? Oh wow, that's big. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was a tiny little fiddler crab too. Oh, my net's collapsing on me. It's gonna cost me a big fish one of these days. Hopefully not today. Oof, yep, see? Net's collapsing. Another big sheep's head. This one's very purple. This one's probably close to 18. I don't think he's quite 20. I won't measure him, but big old fish on the uh, sheep sticker jig once again. Okay, well, my head mount camera died right before I landed this one. <laughs> uh, man, sheep sticker jig in the mouth. I think I'm gonna call it here. Good night, started out slow, 
But uh, by the end of it, got on a very good bite. So might as well end it on a good note. The nice, uh, I'd, I'd call them about 18, give or take a half an inch, but it's a good fish. Alrighty, while well, I'm getting off the water, I uh, just released that nice 18 or so inch right at the end. Fortunately, I don't think you guys got to see that when I went to take the camera off, it was already dead, but that's all right. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video so far. Don't go anywhere. Uh, next, we're doing the catch and cook portion. I'm gonna head home, clean this fish up, and make a nice sheep's head poke bowl for dinner. Man, I'm excited. I'm hungry and that's a delicious meal. I'll see you back in the kitchen. So we're doing a sheep's head poke catch and cook today, like I said. So this isn't a true poke. What I actually do is I ceviche the fish, makes it a little bit more food safe, uh, but you still have that raw fish texture like you would have with a true poke bowl, which if you're not familiar, is basically a sushi roll bowl. This is a really simple dish. All you're gonna need is some raw fish, limes, sushi rice, and whatever kind of sauces you want. Additionally, you can add some accoutrements, some toppings like you would get at a poke bowl place. I like to do sesame seeds and fried onions, edamame as well. You can just get frozen ones. You just throw them on top, but whatever sauces you want, we like to use a kind of a mix. We start with a store-bought poke sauce. You can find them in the Asian or international aisle. Then I mix in a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of ponzu, sometimes some fish sauce and some sriracha if I want some spice or I want some more fishy flavor. You can also add some fresh fruit if you want something a little more tropical feeling. But anyway, let's get to cooking. First, I'm gonna start out by cleaning the fish, then we'll get it ceviche. Okay, now that you have your fillets nice and clean, it's worth taking the time, in my opinion, to cut as much of the bloodline off of the fish as possible, both for taste and presentation if you're going to be serving this to somebody else. Now that your fillets are nice and clean, it's time to cut the fish into small cubes. I go for about one centimeter cubes or a little less than half an inch on a side. The most important thing to remember is to make them pretty uniform or about roughly equal in size. That's going to help the ceviche time being consistent across all the pieces. Next, I'm going to place the fish in a shallow baking dish or any flat container, like a Tupperware container would be good as well. Then pat the fish down flat. Now it's time to cut some limes. How many you're going to need fully depends on how much fish you're preparing. I used about six small limes for this fish, which was about 12 or 14 ounces of meat. Next, squeeze those limes onto the fish in your flat container. Once all the limes are juiced, mix the fish and lime juice together and pat the fish flat. Now place the bowl in the fridge and wait about 45 minutes. This would be a good time to go ahead and get that sushi rice going so it's time to cool off before you serve it. Now that your fish is done with the ceviche process, pour off the excess lime juice as best you can and set the fish aside. Now it's time to prepare your toppings. I'm starting out by dicing up some pineapple chunks. I shelled some edamame off screen here. Then I chopped up some scallions. Now I'm going to set all my toppings aside until the end. Now it's time to mix up your sauces. Like I said, I'm doing poke sauce, ponzu, and soy sauce as the base. I didn't include any measurements here because everyone kind of has their own taste for it, so I kind of just wing it every time. I just pour them all over the fish and mix it all together in the container. Alright, the moment we've all been waiting for, let's put this whole poke bowl together. First the rice then the fish. I like to pour a little bit of the extra sauce over the fish so you can mix it into the rice. Then your toppings. And finally, to finish out the dish, I like to put a healthy amount of fried onions on top. They add a nice crunch, and I'd be lying if I said they weren't delicious. Time to eat. Okay, I'm really excited. This is not my first time by any means eating this. We make this all the time. I just have never done a catch and cook video with it. Get a little bit of everything. Scallions, edamame, pineapple, and corks of fish. Wow. <laughs> Man, 
That is really good. Like I said, we make this all the time, but this is a good batch. Mm. If you've never had poke before, do yourself a favor and try it, or even better, make it yourself. All you need is some fresh fish, which is obviously what we're always trying to get here. This is the accoutrements we like to put on it, but you can do any kind of toppings. Or if you're crazy, you can do no toppings. Preparing the fish is also the same process we go through to make ceviche. We just drain out the lime juice and mix it up with the sauces instead and serve it over rice. But anyway, I'm going to go eat. I really can't wait. The hardest part about making this is waiting 45 minutes for the fish to ceviche. I know you can do it in less time. That's just the time I like for the consistency I get out of the fish. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, the fishing, and the cooking if you made it this far. I'll see you next time, and remember to make some time for fishing. Bye.